Hello, today we're going to make some 3D text within Lin Studio. Now, Lin Studio itself does not have a 3D text feature, and we could always model some 3D text and import it. But if we create this effect ourselves, now we can dynamically set this value. So here we could set it to the person's username. That's something you can't do if you uh, import a 3D model text. So let's go ahead and make it ourselves. So the inspiration for this came from ztext.js. So if I move my mouse around, you can see that the text is rotating. It's 3D. Uh, they kept it fully selectable. And how they did that was instead of creating actual 3D text, um, they're using multiple layers. And so we're going to use the same technique in Sideline Studio. I will create some text. And if you create enough layers, you can get that nice 3D look. So let's head back into Lens Studio and let's start with a fresh project. All right, so once this loads, uh, we're going to go ahead and add just a few things. So up here in the objects, we're going to add a face image. So this is just an image attracting to the head. Now one thing we do need to do is we have this look at component. Now let's change the preview uh, to smile person one so we get some head movement going. Now the image is always facing the camera. And if we have 3D text, that's going to kind of mask the effect. So this look at, we're just going to delete that. Now the image rotates with the head. So now that we have that, uh, come down to the resources. And here we're going to add a few more things. So we're going to come down and we're going to add a text texture. Now up here in the objects panel, if we type in text, you can see we can add a text object or screen text. A screen text is like a 2D overlay. Text object we could attach to the user's head, but we're going to use the text texture because we can apply materials to this. And then um, this will end up being applied to our image. So let's go ahead and just give it um, some text. Just say hello. And let's go ahead and import a custom font. Let's use Pacifico. Now if we come back to our text, let's go ahead and add that font. And just to see how this looks, uh, come up to our face image and for our texture, Choose the text, and now you can see our text. But it's still very much 2D. So let's go ahead and finish getting things ready. Um, now I'm going to add two unlit materials. So this one, let's do some blue text. I'm going to call this main. So this is going to be kind of front color. If we come back here, you can see we have yellow, and then the 3D portion is a little darker. Uh, we're going to set it the same way to just make sure it's easy to see. Uh, so let's add another unlit. I'm going to rename this one to shadow. I'm also going to choose a blue, make it just a little darker. All right, so we have everything set up. So now to actually create the effect, we're going to need to do some scripting. So let's add a script. Now we can name this whatever we want. I'll call it text 3D. I'll come over here. I'll open in a built-in editor. All right, so there are different ways that we can get all the inputs that we need. Uh, so you're comfortable with scripting and you have a better way to do it, by all means do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through the way that I used and how I got a result that I liked. So we're gonna start off with our inputs. So I'm going to have an input scene object. I'm gonna call this parent. So this is gonna be the object that all of our layers live under. And in our case, it'll just be this head binding. Now I'm going to grab another input. 
will be another scene object. This will be text to image. So this is gonna be our base image. So in this case, image one, uh, that's what we're gonna be duplicating. Now I'm also going to grab an assets.texture and this is going to be our text texture. Now this isn't required for the effect, but if we want to dynamically set the text, uh, we will need to bring this in. Now I'm going to add a few parameters. So float offset. So this will be the spacing between each layer. I'm just going to give it a default value of 0 0.02. That seems to work pretty well. I'm also going to do an int, the number of layers. Um, 50 also seems to work pretty well. All right, almost ready. So let's go ahead and add a couple more inputs. So an asset.material, and this is going to be our shadow material. So we're going to apply our main material to our image. Uh, but then we're going to load in our shadow material in the script and apply that to all those layers. And I'm also going to add one last input, a boolean for auto updating. Uh, we don't want to be um, creating all these layers every time a frame updates. We just need to create everything once, but while we're laying things out, uh, this is nice to have. So if we scale this image, um, all those layers will scale with it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create all of our layers. So I'm going to create an array called instances to save everything in. I'm going to go ahead and create a function to keep everything nice and organized. So we're going to do a for loop for var i equals zero i is less than script.numlayers i++ plus plus. so however many layers we have uh, we're going to go through and create a copy of our face image so we're going to create a new object we'll say script.parent.copy scene object we're going to copy our text image. Now, once we have our object, we also need to grab the image component so we can change the material. So say image comp is um, equal to our new object dot get component. We're going to go component dot image. Now, once we have that image component, we're going to change the main material to be our shadow material. And then we're going to go ahead and push that um, onto our instances. All right. So this is our initialization function. So now once we create all those layers, we need to offset them uh, to create that illusion of depth. So I'm just going to create a function called position and also we'll have another for loop. We'll go through our instances of those new objects and we're going to start off by grabbing our instance at that particular index. So I'll just call this new object again. Let's go ahead and grab the transform because there's a few different changes we'll be making. So we'll get our original face image. So everything will be relative to that. We'll grab the position off of that. So we'll do our transform.get local position. Now this is all a little dry, but we'll get back to the fun stuff in just a moment. All right, so now that we have the position of the layer, we're going to offset, offset it in the Z direction. So we'll just take our Z, and we'll take uh, the original Z. We're going to subtract 
script.offset. So our offset will be 0 0.02, so we'll move it back in the Z by that much. But since we have multiple layers, we're going to multiply it by our index. We're also going to add 1 so that our first layer, um, because we're starting at 0, so if we just multiply by I, our first layer, shadow layer, would be the same position as the original text. So we need to add 1 here before we multiply. All right, so now on our new object, we're going to get the transform and set the local position to that position we just modified. And then this part is only needed for if we're using our auto update. We're going to get our local scale and set that to the local scale of our original image. So now if we're scaling this as we're editing, this will make sure that the scale of each layer gets transformed as well. All right, so now all we need to do is just call those two functions and we're good to go. Uh, so now this next part is just for our using our auto update flag. So we'll create an update event. We'll bind a new function. And if auto update is on, go ahead and call position. Otherwise, we don't need to worry about that. And now, and just to make use of our ability to dynamically set the value, I'm going to grab the user context system. I'm going to request the display name. And now uh, we're going to set the value of our text to the user's display name. So we're going to grab our script.text texture. Now we can't directly set text because it's actually an image. So we have to do dot control. And then we can do dot text. Set it to display name. And then go ahead and save your script and you're all good to go. So now we have the script out of the way. Now we can go ahead and set up our scene with the script to get the 3D effect created. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to attach the script to my camera object. So I'll add a component, I'll add a script, and I'll grab text 3D. Now we have all of our different inputs. So for parent, I want to use the head binding. Our text image is image one. Our text texture is text. Our shadow material is shadow. And now you can see something really weird going on. So let's go ahead and come over to our materials and we need to make a couple changes. So on our main one, let's come here first. Uh, our base texture, we don't want to use this white base texture. Click here, change that to text. In blend mode, we want alpha test. And then let's come up to this image and choose our main material. And then on our shadow material, we also want to change that base texture to our text, change you to alpha test. And we are not seeing our, oh, we have a script error. There we go, instances. And now we have our 3D text. So let's make this a little bigger so we can see it. So you can see I scaled it and moved it. Now if this happens, you'll have to restart the lens. 
Otherwise, if we come to our camera and on auto update, now if I come back to the image, I can scale it. You can see that we don't get that disconnect. So that's what the auto update does. So yes, you can see um, as the user moves their head, you can see that shadow material kind of back there. We have the illusion of depth. And uh, we can increase the number of layers if we want more depth. So we change it to 100, we get some thicker text. And now the cool thing about this being an image with the material applied, so we can come back to the main one and we could turn on lighting. And now we get some uh, specular lighting. So material params, just choose that white space texture, um, that white one, and then you can mess with the roughness, the metallicness. So you can see you can get a really shiny front face. And then it's not as important for the shadow part because you're just kind of seeing the edge. So the material doesn't matter as much. So you can just keep the shadow material as an unlit one. So I'm not sure I like the shininess on this particular one. So I'll just turn that off. And then the last thing you can do is turn on tone mapping. Uh, that matches the tones of the colors to what your camera's seeing a little better. I'll do that for both the main and the shadow material. But that is it. So we have our 3D text. Now you can use the script anywhere you want. Um, I just recommend turning off auto update before you submit. Um, this lens, it's not a big deal because this is all I have going on. If you have more scripts though, um, that's just extra stuff going on while the frames are updating. So just to recap, uh, we just took an image, put our text texture on it. Uh, we duplicated that, made lots of layers, offset them, and that's how we get this illusion of depth. So it's not true 3D text, but it does look pretty good for just being a layer of images.